This episode of the Major Issues Podcast is brought to you by Patreon.com slash CBC Clubhouse. Comic book click is on Patreon, guys. For as little as 10 cents a day or $3 a month, not only can you help keep the lights on here at Comic Book Click headquarters, but your donation gives you access to exclusive content like CBC commentaries, polls where you can choose what content we cover next, and special behind-the-scenes footage of things here at Comic Book Click. Visit patreon.com slash CBC Clubhouse today and become a patron. And remember, you, yes you, are worthy. Hello everybody out there in comic book land, my name is George Serrano, aka The Don, and if you're listening to this, you can only be here for one reason, and that's a brand new episode of the Major Issues Podcast, brought to you by ComicBookClick.com, and as always, I am never alone. Sir, can you please introduce yourself? I am Michael Chai White's double dip in character, Gregory Thomas, aka GT Rebirth. <laughs> GT Rebirth, I, I like having you in studio uh, we've been covering all kinds of things lately, all the news that has been breaking, but we are on the precipice of watching what could possibly be the most epic comic book martial arts film of all time <laughs> in Shang-Chi, uh, Master of the Ten Rings. Yes. And in preparation of that, I decided that we should check out a film that I think kind of went under the radar for most people. Uh, the animated film Batman Soul of the Dragon, which has some of DC's most historic fighters all in one film. Did you remember seeing promotion for this film? Do you remember seeing people talk about this film? Because I feel like it's one of the more quieter releases that DC's done lately. I, I only remember seeing it being brought up by um, Yogi in our uh, chat room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, 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 and for the most part, I don't even know. I don't even know if like I think I'd heard about it coming out, and I think, I think this has to do with it being back when, um, they had sort of laid waste to the previous continuity of the animated film. So it's like, right. oh, here comes all the so here comes all the new stuff, um, but when it was out, it was just out, and I was yeah. like, oh, that happened, okay, and it seemingly isn't in line. I don't think it's. I don't think it's in the new universe. This seems to be so. an Elseworlds story of sorts. Um, and it, just like that Justice League Dark movie, uh, the animated film, mm-hmm. I don't think this needs Batman in it. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I I watched this film twice already. I like his inclusion, but he's such an overpowering force. Like it, that name, his backstory, all of that. That I think that. You're just watching the film and going, where's Batman? And why are they talking about Batman? And why are they acting like these other people are special? They are. But under that humongous caped shadow, I think that um, a lot of these guys uh, didn't get the proper either introduction or time to flesh out their characters. Um, You know, I have some feelings about that. And I think it's worse here. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's I think it's worse here than in Justice League Dark. (laughs) Um, but that you know, they put his name in the title. It's Batman Sword of the Dragon, uh, 2021 American animated direct to video superhero film produced by WB Animations and DC Entertainment. It's the 40th film of the DC Universe animated original movies. Uh, it's directed by Sam Liu and executive produced by Bruce Tim, featuring an original story not based on the comics at all, even though the characters are all based on comic book characters. The film is dedicated to comic book writer Denny O'Neill, who I believe we lost not too long ago, and whose uh, comic influence inspired this film because he actually created Richard Dragon, Bronze Tiger, Lady mm-hmm. Shiva. Um, and what's interesting is Mark Dacascos, Kelly Hugh, and Michael J. White, J. White are all martial artists, like yes. their characters, Richard Dragon, Lady Shiva, and Bronze Tiger. Yes. What do you think about that little, that little tactic? Do you think that that helps? It does add a, a fun sense of legitimacy. Um, Mark DeCascos, who I'd, who I'd only known, although without name, uh, from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., was okay. also revealed to me to have been like one of the main characters from the Double Dragon movie I saw as a child. And I was just like, what? Oh, why? wow. So he's an OG OG. Yes. Oh, that's so, crazy. Like, he's been doing this thing for a while now. Um Kelly Hugh, interestingly enough, I don't 
I think I've only seen it in the martial arts world once. Okay. I've, only, I've always just known her as a, just a straightforward actor. Michael J. White, however, kind of his career. 100%. Like, he's <laughs> one of those ones, like, that I constantly saw training. He always looked like a badass doing it. You're kind of surprised if he doesn't do any in a movie. Like, oh, you're just acting today. Yeah, why, why'd they bring you in? Why, <laughs> they brought you in for that? That doesn't seem Whoa. funny. Interesting. Uh, writer Jeremy Adams cites the 1970s Batman's comics, uh, specifically those written by Danny O'Neill, as we spoke about before, as an influence on the tale. According to him, the 70s were an, a unique time. You have the Kung Fu craze, James Bond movies, and satanic cult movies. So there's like this great cross section, and they all lived in the same time in the 1970s, and it was a great place to put this. Not mm-hmm. to mention, it's one of Batman's seminal ages. Yes. Um also, shout out to both of the roles, too. As I said to you, um, I've only seen Kelly Hugh in one martial arts role. It was on Arrow as China White. Hey. Um, which also starred Michael J. White as, as the character Bron- he plays as here. As Bronze Tiger, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, that's- no Mark DeCasco stuff. <laughs> so they've been really good about that then. They've been really good about keeping some of those characters around each other. Because as I look through their histories, they have tangled a lot. Uh, some of these characters that are in this comic. Yes. Do you remember? I mean, obviously we're a bit older, but do you remember the kung fu craze? Do you remember like these older uh, Japanese or Chinese uh, martial arts films? And uh, have you seen any of them? I think one of the first ones I had saw was the uh, Five Deadly Venoms. That was the uh, the classic that I saw, and I remember thinking like, "Oh, this is really cool." <laughs> I am I'm, I'm familiar with uh, the, um, which I guess is low hanging fruit. I'm familiar with some of the Bruce Lee ones because I had a, I had a, a case of those at one point in my life. Yeah, those are pretty awesome. Um, I'm for, for the most part, I'm only like I'm only familiar with them in the sense of documentary. Okay, I've seen documentary on the culture of martial arts films pretty often, but I've seldom ever seen seldom ever seen the, the actual films they've sp- spoken about. Okay, as as you've heard, because they decided to make an entire song about it in the seventies, everybody <laughs> was kung fu fighting. Oh yes, they were, uh, and so. Like they said, it was Kung Fu, satanic cult movies, right? Because I guess it's all in the Manson stuff and all that kind of crazy satanic cult stuff is going on. Um, yes. We have a cult in here, the Cobra cult, uh, which I had never heard of up until then. And it's one of those things. It, is this the most generic thing ever? Like a serpent based cult seems to be in every comic like <laughs> franchise that I've heard about. Oh, that Serpent Society movie we never got. Right. It's in this. <laughs> I want to say there's something similar in Invincible. There's like some kind of snake based. Okay. Snake based uh, villain that has a whole group of snake based <laughs> um, um, flunkies. At, at the risk of using the term again, I think it's the, um, you know, just the low hanging fruit of snake being. Uh, <clears throat> duplicitous. I guess. Yes, the snakes being duplicitous and evil and conniving. A snake's a snake, people. Let's get all this bad PR off of the snake. The same way that we did it with uh, Jaws, you know? Jaws did a lot of bad for, for sharks. I feel like we might need to rehabilitate the uh, snake image uh, as it stands. So much so that we now get a week dedicated to how not so quite malevolent sharks are. <laughs> yes, yes. Let's see them tear through some things. <laughs> um Interestingly enough, because I like to point this out sometimes, um, because you also have the connection with like um, older 70s, like cheap on the cheap, cheap martial arts flicks. Yeah. The exact type of flick that Michael Jai White would parody later with um, <clears throat> uh, Black Dynamite, the movie right. and the series. Yeah. Uh, the connection being a lot of this has to do with the fact that there is a deep seated uh, connection between those old karate, uh, kung fu karate martial arts films in the black community. Yes. Yeah. Because back in the day when, you know, you just go into heavily colored and uh, uh, impoverished neighborhoods, the cheap theaters on late nights with that, that was the stuff you could afford. A hundred percent. You could afford cheaply dubbed martial arts movies at a low, low price. Yeah. And it became a, a it became a, a, it became a staple in the culture. A hundred percent. Which I is mean, why everybody was Kung Fu fighting. This is true. And you don't even have to look further than, let's say, Wu-Tang. Yeah. Right? Who right. were incredibly exactly. influenced by these martial arts films um, and everything that, you know, they stood for and stuff. And when you look back 
uh, one of the most interesting things I like to do is look back at, at the creation of some of these characters to find out if the time period had anything to do with, with it. Mm-hmm. And Richard Dragon came out in 1974, Lady Shiva, 1975, Bronze Tiger, 1975. Okay. You know, so they're all back to back. Like they were really riding this craze for a second. Uh, o Sensei, which is his name, including with the O, he was 1974 as well. I didn't get it every time. Oh, sense. I just thought they were like, like exclaiming, you know, oh, Sensei. <laughs> oh. Uh, but let's get right into this. This is a pretty uh, short one, but I did like what they did here. Hmm. So our film opens up in a very fancy establishment with two well-dressed men playing poker. When one wins, the, water, the waiter goes to give him another drink, but instead uses spy equipment to steal the fingerprint off the glass and use it to access a secret room. I like that it had a little printer on it. Like it just prints the little uh, fingerprint printer. It reminds I love me like that a Polaroid. the... Uh... I love that the technological advancement of spy of spy tools is pretty much the same in the seventies as it is now. A hundred percent. I was gonna say that you know those are called biometrics, fingerprints, eye scanning, all that kind of stuff. But just as many times as we've seen people implement these security precautions, we've seen as many people break in to the, yeah. these things. You figure they'd figure something else out right now, you know, saliva or something. But um, yeah, he gets in. Uh, once he gets inside, he finds a safe and he cracks it and he takes pictures of the files within. I like this little spy camera, the little <laughs> uh, spy camera that he's there using. It's around this time that I start to realize that this character looks a bit like Bruce Lee. We had been talking about him earlier. Um, and I don't, I'm like, I do not remember Bruce Lee being in this film. But they mentioned the dragon. So maybe that's what they're referring to. Maybe this is one of those Scooby-Doo meets, you know, uh, Abbott and Costello. It's, it's, it's Batman meets Bruce Lee. You know, for me, it's it, it's that like almost everything has its um Bruce Lee avatar. Yeah, it you does. know, Marvel has Marvel's Shang Chi is very pretty much it. Like, I don't, I doubt this will be reflected in the film, but if you look at the comic books, like a lot of the poses are very much reminiscent of him. Yep. You know, um, I'd assume it's this character for DC. You play Street Fighter or Tekken, both of them have their Bruce Lee avatar characters. A hundred percent. It's, it's, it's a thing. There's always a Bruce Lee guy. Yeah. And even someone could say, uh, Liu Kang. Is yeah. is the Mortal Kombat Bruce Lee? Oh yeah, one hundred percent surrogate. One hundred percent. Anyone you see speaking in that very high tone when they're delivering <laughs> their punches and kicks is, is usually a takeoff. Of, uh, yeah, it's usually a takeoff of old Bruce there. Um, when he sees an ancient door in one of the files, he hesitates, and because of this, he's caught by security, all armed with guns. They all fire on him, but he uses martial arts to take them all out before spin kicking a grenade back at one of them. That was pretty awesome. And I was like, that guy's totally dead. <laughs> oh, I, I always hope there's just a second of acceptance where it's just like, yeah, oh, crap. Yeah. It reminded me of the Jason Todd, the doors locked sequence. Uh, could, took all the way to get over there. Son of a bitch. <laughs> doors locked. Yeah. Um, so he escapes by jumping out of a window only to parachute onto a yacht. And when he lands in front of the beautiful women, he pulls up a flute of champagne and introduces himself as Richard Dragon. That was the most James Bond sequence <laughs> I've ever seen in a DC animated film. <laughs> uh, and we get we literally get the funky James Bond title sequence. What do you think about the music in this? Like, do you think it captured that 70s aesthetic? A little bit, a little bit. Um, I, I, I don't necessarily have the greatest memory of it but like at the time it felt right yeah a lot like, of funk <laughs> <laughs> like i said a lot of a, a, a lot of my um a lot of my reference here is pretty much the uh the black dynamite sort of uh, i don't yeah. know if i want to call it a parody as much if it's just like no, a, it's its own thing, a very think, hyped yeah. up homage yeah it's like shoot him up it's its own you know it's its own thing in a very it is, high and universe like, but like at the same time, it's sort of like it sort of pokes fun at the uh, the low quantity of it because like yeah. you could see the boom mic. Yes, hundred <laughs> percent. He's like reflected in the mirror. You're like, wait, yeah. a <laughs> were you were you taken aback at all that Richard Dragon was shown like Bruce Lee? No, no, no. Because it, 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 it's just something. I, there's always one, and I just like, oh, okay, this is you. Cool, got it. This um, Richard Dragon. The most, the most I've been taken aback about it was just like. I, I wasn't sure and I was trying to place it because I was just like, wait, Richard Dragon? 
Yep. You're not the Hispanic dude from Arrow. I was just going to say this Richard Dragon or Ricardo Diaz. <laughs> right. You know, it's like uh, I almost put because yesterday I posted, um, you know, just so people can see that he was basically made for the same reasons, the Kung Fu craze, Bruce right. Lee and stuff like that. Um, and Ricardo Diaz purports to be his son or a son of something where the original, this Richard Dragon uh, is, is the mentor. Gotcha. Then Ricardo Diaz becomes Richard Dragon, you know, somewhere else down the line. But yeah, when I heard Richard Dragon initially, I was expecting the very short Hispanic man um, <laughs> who for some reason took two seasons to beat. But that's a whole nother story. Uh, come back to our downfall of the Flash episode <laughs> if you want to check out me talking for about all the villains that had the last two seasons long. It was that one. Yes ridiculous um we, we later- get more prometheus <laughs> oh i love prometheus we later see a man dressed all in white inform his boss who's entertaining a lady of the night <laughs> that their location in france has been compromised and that someone knows of the gate it takes a very long time before we get names for either one of these gentlemen but one yes. of them is uh burr richard burr is it another richard burr i think so i think that might be his name um, and then the other one is Schlagenfaust. <laughs> that's the name of the. Uh, that's the name of the uh, Jeffrey Burr, I believe. Yeah, Jeffrey Burr, and it's Schlag- yeah. Schlagenfaust. 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 We're, we're, gonna, we're gonna of, fall over that all day. Yeah, hey, I I eventually got yoked and high. <laughs> so oh, we'll get we'll get Schlag- Schlagenfaust. <laughs> Schlagenfaust. Uh, if you look up the Swiss, literally the Swiss, um, that's the character okay. he's based on. I think it's a situation ah. uh, like the Russian with Kevin Nash, where it's like, we probably shouldn't just call him the Russian. The Russian. <laughs> so let's give him some kind of name. Uh, so, yeah, if you look up Schlagenfaust, you won't see it anywhere. But if you look up the Swiss, it looks exactly like this man, all white with those big Coke bottle uh, sunglasses. I do love that we just had an era where we just called dudes the Russian and the Swiss. And that was it. <laughs> that was it. That was his name. You, you, you just dealt with it like that. I mean, Scorsese talks a lot of crap, but he made the Irishman. You understand? That's, so, that is true. <laughs> so he's doing the same thing over there. The boss gives him orders and then locks his hooker. Yes, his hooker. Because they exchange money. <laughs> I mean, they talk about the exchange <laughs> of money. Um, he locks her in a snake infested room while he watches from behind the glass and at one point devours a mouse. So that's, you know, we said I that was in the, nasty. Yeah, I want to say it was in the last episode we were talking about how in every film, the villain needs to establish dominance by killing an innocent person mm-hmm. in a very cruel way. And that's that's all they're doing here. Yes. Um, what do you think about death by snakes? Hooker death by snakes? Uh, oh, God, I just kept thinking of the um, like how you find her after with the, the swollen oh, welts and everything. Yeah. Oh no. From all the venoms and the, ugh, yeah, he gets ugh. lady Eve to clean up that, uh, clean up that mess. He's not, right. He's not doing any of that. Uh, so at a Gotham nightclub, Richard dragon embarrasses a bouncer and elsewhere. We see, of course he does. <laughs> yes. Elsewhere. We see Bruce Wayne's girlfriend, silver St. Cloud. We got a silver St. Cloud, uh, you know, show up here. Uh, breaks up with him because of his secretive nature. I'm watching both <laughs> this and Superman and Lois at the same time. And there's a lot of like, if you have a secret, just tell me. And they're like, get through it. Sorry. So, yeah, it, it, it just sucks, man. Can't be happy because you can't tell anybody your secret. Yeah. Richard Dragon walks in to speak to Bruce, who is surprised to see an old friend. And then we get the first of many, 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 many flashbacks. So many flashbacks. Part of me wonders if they could have just told this linearly, if they could have just went to, through the training. And then the middle part of the movie is Richard coming back to get Bruce. But, you know, non-linear um, storytelling and all that. I don't, you know, what's weird to say. I almost feel like it would. If you're only rearranging the scenes, it obviously wouldn't have been any longer, but it would have felt longer if you had told me it takes us 30 minutes before we start to establish the main villain. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, because Burr actually has nothing to do with any of the flashbacks. Nope. So I kept thinking he's one of them. Nope. No, no, no. 
Stop Never thinking. turns out that way. <laughs> yeah, Stop thinking. Yeah, right. that was basically what they were trying to do. Like, that thinking. was my first mistake. <laughs> uh, they reminisce, and we flash back to Bruce's original training days on Nanda Parbat. I love all this stuff coming back. Nanda Parbat, Corto Maltese. It's all really, mm. you know, tickling my funny bone. And especially with Bruce Wayne and his training, if I'm not mistaken, a lot of the cool martial arts stuff from Batman comes up out around this time in the 70s for two reasons one because uh like we were just talking about the kung fu craze was everywhere but two the comic creators were trying desperately to get the taste out of batman 66 out of people's mouths <laughs> so next thing you know he's gonna show him kicking us yeah next thing you know he's in a desert shirtless with the cow still on <laughs> taking on raza ghoul in the surf in a, in a sword fight you know so <laughs> Yeah, this was done completely to rehabilitate Batman. But one of the most um, profound, I want to say, changes that they made to him, the idea that he would be trained by the best of the best in all in all aspects, you know? Yes. Did Had they gone through James Bond's training, like fighting training? Rarely. No, right? Like uh, he's well, he's from a he's a graduate of a school of operatives, isn't he? Like, yes. So they all like. Get, they 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 never really go into it, yeah. And I think that's one of I think that's one of those good things, especially for stuff something like Bond, which is so high <laughs> fantasy, which is just like yeah. no no no. If we try to explain it, then we put then we put it in a box. Yeah, and you then people there, expect us to stay in the box. A hundred percent. You sit there and you decide that the next Bond is going to be like totally realistic in his fight skills, and then people are like, oh, I love this whole series, and they see the judo chop. <laughs> from back in the day, and they're like, "Wait a minute!" <laughs> that 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 is that is essentially what they did with Craig. Yeah, it's yeah. a much grittier depiction of it, and it, compared to the other days, where it's like he, where you know, like Brosnan's character didn't get into too many fist fights. No, it would mess up the suit and the hair. <laughs> he had <laughs> cool. He had good gadgets, and you know, um, some help. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Craig's is way more gritty. No one's electrocuting the balls of Roger Moore. That's just not <laughs> happening. I think that was in his contract. He said he demands <laughs> no, no one's no one gets close to the Moors. <laughs> That's it. Uh, but Bruce gets up there. He has no flower. Usually he puts a, you know, he has to give him some sort of flower from a high mountain for yes. access. But he meets O Sensei, who welcomes him and introduces him to the other trainees on the campground. O Sensei has a bit of a uh, comedic uh, <laughs> presence about him. Like, he, he's like, close the door, you know, we'll get a draft <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, he introduces uh, him to the other trainees. We meet his. I was gonna say, it, it just kind of reminds me of the. It's one of my favorite stupid lines. It was just like, it's the Wi Fi password. We're not <laughs> savages. <laughs> right, right, right. Everyone expects them to be like stone faced and stoic. <laughs> and they're like, bro, come on, you know, we're people. Lighten up, lighten up. Uh, yeah, he meets his her best his best student Shiva, which I I, I have like a pro I I almost feel you have a problem disgusting. with it? no saying just Shiva. Oh, okay, like she's Lady Shiva to me. For some oh, reason. I see. So just calling her Shiva feels weird. Um, mm. but does she have a last name? I don't think so. Shiva, uh, Shiva's high on my list of of like comic book characters, DC characters, Batman characters because of um Cassandra. She was her mm. mother. Right, right, right. So uh, in doing that, I went back and did a deep dive on Shiva. And she is legitimately, I think even now, the best skilled hand-to-hand combatant in DC's universe. Yeah, it, it, she's, she's one of those villains where it's just like, you. All, there's, like, there's a reason you don't see her used that much. Because the overuse it would be to expose some sort of flaw. 100%. And I think she trains the League of Assassins either now or she did. She had a point in doing so. Uh, in exactly. the comics, yeah. So that's Kelly Q playing uh, Shiva. We get Ben Turner, uh, Bronze Tiger, played by Michael J. White. Loving the 70s Afro on Ben, <laughs> ben Turner. I'm loving, uh, you know, the Afro samurai sort of look. It's re- I'm really digging it. But also, like, uh, very evocative of um, what's, what's the character's name from the one of the, the Bruce Lee movies where he has the other black dude he meets oh, on the island. Uh, it's not the not Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Not that. No, 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 no. Um, uh, I'm I'm gonna figure it out in time. <laughs> All right, let me know. Yeah, but I, I uh, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, 
I I think I think Ben Turner's inclusion in this. He was somebody else that I probably saw a lot more because of Arrow. Uh, his name is mm-hmm. Jim Kelly. Yes, yes, yes. Jim Kelly. He was in Enter the Dragon. Yes. See what we do here for you folks. We <laughs> point out deep references, deep cuts out here. Um, we also meet Jade, played by Jamie Chung. Uh, you may recognize that name because she was Chi Chi in Dragon Ball Evolution. If you want to recognize, if you want to recognize it from that, <laughs> but she's also done uh, a lot of voice work. I know she was in Gifted as well. Um, but yeah, she she kills it in this. Jade, as I, w- I was watching this with a friend of mine, and as soon as I heard Jade, I'm like, Jade, that sounds familiar, but it doesn't ring a bell. That's Cheshire. For those who mm. don't, for those who don't know, she's a master martial artist, but also really inept with um, poisons. And I think at one point she also bears, a master baby mama in some shows. I was gonna say I think at one point <laughs> she bears the uh-huh. child of Roy Harper. Yes. Um. Uh. And spoiler alert: I don't think things go well for that child. But we will move forward. or for Roy Harper as it or often for, does. or for Roy Harper. <laughs> don't read Heroes in Crisis. So, <laughs> so, and then we get Rip. This was the most. Like I had no idea who this was. Again, Shiva, I'm like Shiva, Ben Turner, Bron Steiger, Jay, mm-hmm. Jay, Cheshire, Rip. Nothing. Turns Got out this nothing. guy is a character called Judo Master. His ca- his comic book, like when you Google him, his all of it looks generic as hell. Like throwing against the, throwing something against the wall to see if it sticks. And I I was wondering what his inclusion was in this seemingly cannon fodder as we get there later on. But um, he's played by Chris Cox. And then lastly, we have Richard Dragon, played by Mark Dacascos. Yes. When uh, Bruce Wayne sees a fancy door at the location, he acts about it, but he's brushed off. And he's given an opportunity to quit outright before they start, but he doesn't take it. What do you think about this idea that permeates forward that Bruce is not even close to being one of the top fighters in this group? (laughs) I, I kind of like it, and I, to me, it, it to me it sort of points to a um one of those things that works in the fantasy aspect, but uh is a a, a, a huge logical fallacy that Bruce could quote master so many different arts in like less than a decade and a half. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Which we've you know what is a jack of all trades, master of none. Right. That's yes. the whole. That's the whole saying. Uh, you could be a great chef, but odds are you specialize in something. You cannot specialize in everything because yes. they would take uh, way too much time. I do like when Bruce is taking down a couple pegs. I love Batman as a character, but sometimes we get to a point where this man can and will do anything and everything. Yes. I, I like that. You know, put some respect on Shiva's name. Put some respect on Bronze Tiger's <laughs> name. Like, get that stuff up. Bronze Tiger, you know, for all that they did for him in Arrow, it's not like he died. No, you know, it's not like he he was a one off villain. He got taken care of. They showed how formidable he was. I think he gets much... a whole like re- like of uh, a form arc, doesn't he? I think they're in there. I feel like there's I remember something about his son, but I also feel like at one point he was on the Suicide Squad. Yeah, they, they put them all. They put all the villains together to go do something, probably for Argus, because they're always doing some madness oh, over there. Oh, yeah. Argus. <laughs> Back in the present, Richard and Bruce share a drink, and Dragon tells Wayne that someone has the gate. Richard asks for help, but Bruce says those days are over. Not impressed by his answer, Dragon shows Bruce that he knows of his extracurricular activities by moving the book on the bookshelf that opens up a secret panel showing all of Bruce's tech, which is a bunch of tube TVs because it was the 1970s. Right. Uh, I'm amused by this because... Uh, immediately, I'm just like, what? wait, this is somebody literally moving a gate? Right. How yes. does this, what? They got the gate. How do you, what do you mean they got the gate? It took the gate? Did the gate off its hinges? How does this work? Also, Did they airlift the gate? Also, they always show this. If anyone's ever been to any kind of club, let alone a nightclub, you can't just have a camera in the distance pick up the audio of the people talking in the nightclub. Tonight Mind club. you, also over the music, That's over like, all the other people. Over, over the music, over the other people talking. It's not like the camera was on the table, you know, but that's always how they show it. Somebody checking on everybody while they're gambling, drinking, and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm led to believe then this is Bruce's club? Yes. Okay. Because I think I put my head down to take some notes when I looked up. I was like, 
well, this room is in the club. So this is, I'm assuming this is Bruce's club. That's one way to, to, to moonlight as a normal person. Yeah, I guess. Um, and besides his inclusion in this story, everything we know about Bruce Wayne is still the same. You know, his parents were still shot. He's still, you know, on a journey for vengeance and for uh, justice and chooses to dress up as a bat to do so. Um, I mean, choices are choices. You know, he told his father. He couldn't lie to his father. <laughs> um, so Bruce agrees to help. And Richard explains that terrorists have their hands on the gate. He continues, but they're interrupted by a group of ninjas who break into the nightclub. As you as you are. Yep. At times. But. Instead of just continuing with this, we got another flashback. So we go back uh, and we see Osensei training his students to learn and try to break a rock. Um, yeah, it's, 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 the, it's the wax on, wax off. It's the be calm like water. It's everything we've ever seen in one of these things. I would have liked it more if Osensei uh, whisked his beard like the homeboy <laughs> in uh, Kill Bill. Kill Bill, yes. I always thought that was a, that was a baller. <laughs> was I a always love that. I always love that. Oh my God! Isn't that Sunny Chiba? Is it? It might I think be. It is, and if it is, he recently passed away this week. Yes. Um. So yes. The COVID Tri- is real, ladies and gentlemen. Tribute to you, kind sir. Thank you for uh being such an awesome sensei. Yes, it is. I, I was uh, rest in peace. I was bugging out over this rock hitting thing. It always bug. It bugged me out in Kill Bill. She's punching this thing and there's blood all over her knuckles. I'm like, that's my cue to stop. That's, that's my disgusting. cue to be like, that's like, okay, this is not working. Can we try something else? Um, but Bruce keeps going at it. One of the things I think they try to show is that while Bruce may not be the most skilled, he's definitely the most determined. Yes. And um, I was asked personally who I think would win in a fight between Batman and Iron Man, given all their gadgets and skills. And I said, I don't think Tony has the killer instinct. I think he mm. might be able to blow him up. He might be able to blow him up, tech versus tech. But it, they got down to fighting and, and limited, you know, limited tricks. Bruce just shows a level of resilience and durability that I think that is a hallmark for that character. I don't think Iron Man's hallmark is look how, m- how many pun- punches he could take. I mean, I, I, I get what you mean. It's just when you say that, I, I, I'm immediately reminded of that uh, panel of him blasting old dude's head off in... Um... Yeah. Uh, what was it? Extremis. Or look at um, what look at how he handles Rhodey when he sees Vision get shot. Just picks right. a hand up and blasts. <laughs> oh, Falcon! That was Falcon. Uh, Falcon. Yeah, yeah. He just blasts Falcon halfway across the thing. So yeah, but I I I do think that what they're trying to showcase here is Batman's resiliency or Bruce Wayne's resiliency. Yeah. One of the things that he has, whether or not it's a smart thing to have, we haven't established that yet. But he has it in spades. This resiliency. Just that he's not going to stop. Yeah. Good or bad, for good or bad, he's just not. Yes. Um, so uh, everyone quits, but Bruce keeps going at it. Oh, Sensei tells him to have patience, and so Bruce punches his hand bloody. Uh, and then that's exactly what he said to do, Bruce. Yeah, he said he actually said, Don't do it because you can't <laughs> do it because I don't want you to do it, I want you to try. And Bruce takes that as, I'll show you, <laughs> <laughs> you'll see, you'll see. Uh, I just recently also watched an episode of Superman and Lois again, where there's a fist breaking. And I was like, oh, this is, yeah, I forget. That's painful. You know, there's a lot of bones in this thing. So, um, yeah, he's just punching at it. We go fast forward now. We're back at the nightclub. And uh, they're taking down the hired goons when all of a sudden, boom, the power cuts out. Suddenly, a dark figure takes down all of the men and it's revealed to be Batman. 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 The Batman. Later in the car, Bruce and uh, Richard speak about the Batman and decide that they need to get the sword before anyone else. And to do this, they need Shiva. So they head Mm -hmm. to Chinatown. They say the sword. I back it up because I'm like, they say the sword as if I know what this sword is. (laughs) But (laughs) that just means we're ready for another flashback because... In another flashback, we see the sword in question, the soul breaker. And at the time, I thought it was a soul taker. And I'm like, it's Katana showing up. This would be so cool, but she never does. Instead, this <laughs> is a soul breaker, a very powerful weapon that might even be magical. And it's given to Shiva by O Sensei. This is actually one of my favorite parts because Jay's all like, uh, I don't think she should have it. And O Sensei is like, okay, you think you should have it? And she's like, no, not me, but I think Rip should have it. 
<laughs> and he's like, what? Uh, Rip, do you do you feel this way too? And so you're like, yeah. And he goes, okay. So uh, I was going to say, Rip, you know, um, Rip absolutely like a, uh, uh, how do you say, um, a white man in another country thinks, yes, I should absolutely have that. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, why'd you give it to the Asian woman? This doesn't make any sense. I've seen Kung Fu. This is not how, that's, how this goes. So, uh, yeah, Rip is all like, I'm down. And he goes, yeah, you can have the sword so long as you can defeat Shiva in combat. As they get ready for the fight, he pulls Shiva to the side, oh, Sensei does, and says, by the way, you can only use one finger. Yep. And I'm already like, this is not going to go well. And <laughs> they go and they do battle, and it is freaking brutal. Shiva takes down Rip using one finger, silencing all of the doubters. At one point, she goes for like a death blow <laughs> with her finger. Yeah. And oh, Sensei is like, nah, chill. You're good. You got it. Here you go. Here's the sword. I think your point's been made, darling. What did you think about the animation of the action sequences in this? Um, you know, uh, it's, it's sometimes it's a little fast, but like I, I guess I expect that. Um, only because like I don't expect them to put like there's only really so much money into the animation, so like they're gonna be fast things that you can't really see. Yeah, and it's gonna be like the moves are almost gonna be frame to frame. Yeah, it did show. It did look like they were showing some techniques though there. Oh yes, for sure. I, I really like that. Um, usually, especially like we say all the time with Superman, you don't have to really know technique. You can punch through walls and people's faces. So it's <laughs> it's cool to see because Shiva doesn't have any powers. No. You know, it's it's cool to see her uh, best somebody bigger and seemingly stronger than her. Uh, we were told early on she's the best student, so we really needed some some weight to what she's able to do. In the present, Dragon and Wayne hit up a souvenir shop and are taken to the back room. And now I think all of Chinatown is full of back rooms. Now I think there's just all kinds of stuff. I've seen too Especially many the souvenir movies. shops. Yeah, I've seen too many of these damn movies. Uh, yeah, they go to the back room and there's an underground fighting league there. Mm -hmm. And it's being run by Shiva. I love how Shiva looks in this. Yeah. I love her 70s hair with the headband. <laughs> I love the Asian inspired top. I love the sword. I think she's okay. a badass. Um, so, yeah, Bruce is like, she controls all of this. She controls all of the organized crime in Chinatown. And he's like, then why? Which is like, why haven't you stopped her? And he's like, ah, I'm getting around to it. And it's like, basically, uh, I, I'm not stopping her because we all saw what happened to Rip. And I'm not trying to get be Rip right now. Eh. Um, but, yeah, I. To me reputation in these comic book properties should be high when okay. you talk about somebody like shiva everyone should know who you're talking about and yes. i like that batman's like oh i'm not even gonna mess with that because if you if you don't know her but you know batman you go oh you raised his night bro like Makes yeah you, know, you don't you don't just walk up to shiva's door and act for a fight like uh it'll happen yeah <laughs> <laughs> right on cue because um when one of the fighters that are having this fight, this underground fight, cheats, Shiva tells him that he dishonored her and dishonored the entire room and challenges him, challenges him to a fight. Mm. They go hand to hand and she spends a lot of time just straight up embarrassing him. So everyone can laugh at him and then crushes his throat with a single blow. Fingertips drenched in this man's blood. Mm. What did you think of that? G2? Oh, that was nasty. That was nasty. That, that's a level like, of brutality oh. we never see in these animated films. Mm -hmm. I would love to see them like chalk this, like like ramp this up. Give me a series of the the, the street level Gotham, or even you know uh, what is it? Um, the the slums. I can't remember the slums where where Homeboy used to. Uh, Black Lightning. Oh, 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 the the um that particular spot in the movies. Right? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah, 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 yeah. I, I can't know remember exactly what you mean, but. Yeah, like I would love to see them put a lot of money behind this kind of these action sequences and stuff like that. Uh, really raise the the profile of a lot of these characters. We talk all the time about how many times they go to the well with Batman. And this is I guess this is what I'm trying to say. Ultimately, they should have found a better way to have confidence in selling this movie without Batman, even if he was in it. OK, so like so here's the part of the movie where I start thinking um, I don't understand what the purpose of Batman is in this film. Right. Because between this scene, a previous scene earlier with Batman, 
uh, I think it was a previous scene or it's going to come later. But also, immediately after she takes out the dude with her fingers, she also takes out two other guys with the um, the uh, the stars, right? Yeah, the, the ninja guys, stars. The guys that were creeping up on, on Richard yes. and, and Wayne. She takes out two other dudes with the ninja stars. And I'm thinking, Batman has just watched like four or five people die. It hasn't said a word. In seconds, faster than he could even react. You know, and it's like, not like he's it's not like he's doing his Batman stuff either. At one point, uh, Turner knows all the information. He knows all the spots on the map. He knows who's behind all of this. It's not like Bruce like, oh, well, I, what I'm bringing to the table is the Bat computer or. You oh, know, sure. Stuff, you know? so, but like my sort of thing was just like I, I, I've i I've not once heard um heard Batman like protest all of these killings. No. And no, I'm just maybe like, he was a lot, uh, lot more down for them back in the day. I guess uh, maybe because I'm just like this. This feels like this. This feels like we didn't care too much to to put um, any of the characteristics of Batman in here as much as we needed to have Batman. But the thing is, this, like we said again, this thing already flew under the radar of most even dedicated uh, for sure comic book fans. Do you think like making this just a Richard Dragon vehicle would have been enough to to pull eyes over? I mean, at this point, like I'm thinking um, because you mentioned it earlier, if we could have just hired that actress, we could have had an arrow spinoff. Yeah. 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 I mean, Stephen Amell, man, he'd come in for a couple a couple cool thousand and do some voiceover you know. work. Shiva could have been China White. <laughs> we yeah. could have worked it. It, it, yeah. it would have been fine. That man, they they should have done stuff like that, like in the off season, right? You know, that would have been totally cool. Uh, like good the, old the, CW seed. Yeah, the adventures that you don't see, and non CW seed is also Rush Hour. You want to talk about Hong Kong oh, and martial don't. arts? Is that dude even Chinese? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's absolutely ridiculous. They're not going for the authenticity at all. Oh dear. But. Before the old friends can speak, the man in white, a.k.a. Schlagenfaust, uh, shows up with <laughs> green clad ninjas who do battle with our team of martial artists. I say green clad because I forgot to mention earlier that the ninjas who attacked um, the nightclub were the worst Sub-Zero cosplayers <laughs> I had ever seen. One of them even gets his cosplay so wrong that he's rocking a Raiden hat. It's ridiculous. And I'm like, what is going on here? But obviously... <laughs> They get better outfits in this. They have their all they're all matching green stuff, uh, and they go forth doing this stuff. Mm-hmm. They do battle with our team of martial artists, and using the battle as a distraction, Schlagenfaust steals. Now, the sword. now I hear the music, and you ruined it for me. See, see, <laughs> steals the sword and drives away. Uh, they pursue him in Bruce's tricked-out vehicle, but the villains still manage to get away. I like. The badassery of Shiva in the the ejector seat. <laughs> yeah, I just need this. I need more just forward thinking. Like I'm not here to be prissy or like you don't have to save me. I'm just as badass as everybody else on this team. I need more of that. And DC doesn't have many female led properties at the moment. I mean, they're doing Harley Quinn. We've had Wonder Woman, but some of those characters are a bit resilient to spitting some blood. It's also funny with the thing they do with like. She was always the one in the room with like the worst sounding idea in the room. Like, okay, hold on. Yes. Yep. Let's, let's scale this back here. Yes. You just while, want while to the, kill everyone. While the sword is in her mouth. <laughs> like she's like, right. I'm, I'm about to go do it. You sure? So it's not a good idea. I really want to do it. Uh, so, fine. Slogan Faust is masters to get away. Um, uh, and like I said, if you look up the Swiss, he is an espionage agent born in Switzerland who became an enemy to Richard Dragon. Hmm. So, and that's another thing. Richard Dragon, to all my, for all intents and purposes, in my research, is a hero. Yes. Ricardo Diaz is a villain. Yes. Uh, so that, another thing that did confuse me for a bit, but I was like, whatever, fine. Hundred percent. Because I'm thinking, obviously, Richard Dragon is going to end up being the heel of all this. You're just waiting for the turncoat. Right. I'm like, I, we've already we've already gone through this. Um, but in another flashback, we see uh, Bruce and Ben Turner get into a fight while training. Uh-huh. Bruce is pummeled to a pulp, but refuses to give up, which earns Turner's respect. What do you think about this whole back and forth? This whole like, just because you're rich and your, your parents are dead, don't give you an excuse to. 
be but, all moody. I thought I thought it was interesting. I I I, I like the idea of these two dudes from like um very different like who would probably never meet in their old lives just like coming together in this space and yeah. bonding yeah i also really 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 like that bruce didn't just beat his ass like yeah. i feel like a, a weaker film would have just had bruce like use his cockiness against him and then win bruce no, is better like, than everyone like, yeah but it's like up. it's like no you're not man you're not <laughs> and yeah i'll put, put you down a couple pegs but ends up earning him some respect Bruce being better than everyone also being a common, you know, thing within the movies. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I'll show you martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, they end up deciding they're going to need Turner. We flash forward where Shiva, Dragon, and Wayne show up in front of Ben Turner's martial arts school and tell him about the gate. He agrees to help. In another flashback, we see the students of O Sensei argue about what they think is behind the fancy door. The Sensei keeps it a mystery. Uh-huh. That night, Jade and Rip are missing, so the rest wake up Oh Sensei and they head to the door. When they get there, Rip has plunged the Soul Breaker into Jade, killing her. I was very sad. I was like, I like Chen. I was too. <laughs> I was like, this is not. This is not cool. This is not kosher. He says the door is a gateway to a god, and the sword is the key. Oh. He he needed to kill Jade with it because the ritual needs a sacrifice to work. Uh-huh. Uh, he uses the sword to open the door and is swarmed by dragon like creatures who devour him instantly. I laughed. I'm not going to lie. Because that's he what was, you get. <laughs> he was very happy about opening that door. He had no idea what was about to happen and he just got chomped on. <laughs> it's like they literally just opened the doors at Golden Corral. It was absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> it, was, it, it was ridiculous. He, yep, and they didn't even pay. He, they got, they devour him. The trainees take turn battling the dragon creatures while their sensei just calmly walks towards the door. He steps inside saying a sacrifice is needed to open and close the door and his sacrifice will keep them safe. Uh-huh. He reminds them that they are stronger together before the door closes. In present day, Richard Burr, head of Cobra, observes. Cobra. Yeah, I also, yeah, I put Richard Burr. So maybe he is Richard Burr. Uh uh, had a cobra observes the gate having ripped it from its original location we also see that he has many children captive seemingly for the sacrificial part of the ritual Jeez. Uh, I again we were talking about it almost every week at this point but it seems mm-hmm. that killing kids is the cheat code to like this guy's bad like if the other yeah. stuff if the other stuff makes you think like eh, misunderstood no he kills kids guy's bad Bunch of kids. Uh, and they like to keep kids in those crates, right? Those, those yeah. shipping containers. Uh, none of that. None of that says right with me. No. And, and, he, and he puts on a whole outfit, too. I didn't like what is, what's going on here. <laughs> like we had seen him earlier. He's in a nice suit dealing with his lady of the night. And then he snake. Puts on, Did you get it? <laughs> yeah, and then he puts on this Halloween costume. He's like, I'm ready. Let's do this. Uh, so, yeah, that was that was a bit much. Our heroes charter a jet and set course to a heavily fortified island where the Cobra cult is hoping to perform the ritual. Hmm. Ben reveals that years ago he had tracked Cobra organizations all over the world after discovering that Rip was one of their members and that he had learned that due to an obscure prophecy, Burr meant to become Naga, the snake god's earthly avatar. I like this little flashback because it seems like a Ben Turner movie. Like he's going out, <laughs> globe trotting. He's doing the whole pinning the pictures on the wall, trying to. What does it all mean? He's trying to figure it, figure it all thing out. But also a very good way to uh, to skimp on run time because <laughs> Turner yeah. knows everything, so we could just work on that knowledge and move forward. Uh, what do you think about Turner? Uh, Turner's little like his one man army against the cobra cult i thought it was pretty cool i i i'm amused at his reason for it was just like ah you know i had to work some stuff out so yeah yeah, yeah. it's very hawkeye i had some stuff to work out so i went to japan and murder some fucking thugs yep and the biggest part about it that we find out is that turner's exploits gave him the nickname the bronze tiger he's yes. sort of a boogeyman to the cobra cult and he basically stopped this path of rage um, when he was ordered to kill Burr, knowing that Burr was going to be the avatar for Naga. But when he gets there, Burr is just a kid at the time. Yes. 
So they start, to, they start to argue about whether or not sparing him was the right thing to do. As noted before, she was totally down. She was like, I'd kill him right now. Is he is, is he a kid now? Hitler I'd kill is him, down I'd to kill, kill baby Hitler at any cost. Yeah, she's like, this is like, what are you guys thinking about? Totally down and completely justify the means for her. Um, but the yeah, mistake they, he made was not kidnapping the child and, and raising him. I've seen, <laughs> you know, I've read, I've read, was it Cosmic Ghost Rider? You kidnap the kid, raise him as your own. Yeah. See if you can divert the, uh, <laughs> the, divert, divert, the, the apocalypse, the yes, coming apocalypse. Fate. Come on, man. But they just left him knowing he would eventually be the avatar, like knowing he was just going to come, come back around. Like, you know, uh, they'll, they'll stop. Yeah. And this avatar can't be nowhere near worse than the avatar uh, last ever been the movie. So they woof. figured <laughs> they figured to give this one a chance. Woof. Uh, woof, woof. They argue about whether sparing him was the right thing to do, but Batman puts them back on course. Batman's like, shut up, everybody. We have to we have a mission. We're like flying overhead. Like, we have to we have to figure this thing out. We're kind of busy, y'all. Just a bit busy. Bronze Tiger knows the the uh the location so he knows where they can go to uh affect it because the whole thing is run by cobra so there's all kinds of defenses but yeah. tiger knows his way around things so they parachute to the island and they're confronted by Sloggenfaust, <laughs> who is Sloggenfaust, who is seemingly half dragon did you get any of this i thought it was like half snake I, I, snake, I, snake. I, it looked like snake have snake to me yeah I, we can go with snake totally go with i snake. don't know what that was i was just like oh this is what we're doing i couldn't tell if he was a snake if he can make snakes if he <laughs> is any human uh at one point he takes off his glove his hand is a snake then on his other hand each finger is a snake oh, so i'm like so what nasty. is going on here they cut off his hand it turns into a completely sentient snake on its own <laughs> So I'm like, what is going on? This is absolutely ridiculous. I've never heard of this comic book character before this film. And now I'm watching him do all this weird <laughs> snake stuff. And I am completely confused. Um, and he beats up our heroes pretty handily because now he has a, a teammate. Batman sends Shiva and Richard to go after Burr. Meanwhile, Burr prepares the children for the sacrifice. Uh, Shiva manages to kill one of his cult members, which interrupts the ceremony as it would. Death usually does that sort of thing. Mm. And her and Richard arrive on the scene to do battle with Burr's army, taking down goons one by one. And they are incredibly efficient. They are they basically take down the entire army that surrounds Burr by themselves. And with his army neutralized, Burr six his henchmen, King Snake and Lady Eve, two characters I've never heard of before, mm. uh, to take on Dragon and Shiva respectively, while Burr drags one of the kids to the gate. You only needed one kid, Burr. You know what I'm I don't get. Was this like an insurance plan? Uh, keeping all of them in that crate? I don't know. You gotta, you gotta figure something out there, bro. But Batman and Turner have their hands full and manage to take down Slog and Faust. Uh, they, they, so they're fighting this guy, right? And he falls over. At one point, they drop a pillar on him. So I'm typing. I'm typing to myself. And they defeated Slaugenfaust. They dropped a, <laughs> they dropped a pillar on him. And then he gets the back up. dead. <laughs> and so does the creature. And so Batman goes to spray him with mace. And Turner goes, no, 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 no. That's not going to do it. And they burn these people alive. This is the second incredibly brutal killing done by the heroes in this film. And I'm like, holy hell, they just burn. We watch. As Slaugenfaust melts in the flames. Mm -hmm. And 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 then like afterwards. To which Batman witnesses is no protest. Yeah. And then Turner has like one of those piffy one-liners or something. <laughs> like, you know, like maybe we should have led with that or something like that. I'm like, you can't joke about this. There are human remains still on the ground smoldering. Man, it was straight out of a comic book. Yo, the 70s, man. <laughs> the 70s, bro. Oh, too many anti-heroes. This is all Martin Scorsese's fault, I think. <laughs> but but um, uh, Shiva kills Lady Eve after shattering her sword with her bare hands. Yeah. And then she does like double pressure points into her abdomen. Ugh. And you can see her fingers go deep inside of this woman. Ugh. I don't know what eternal organ she punctured, but she seemingly kills this woman with her bare hands. I think all of them. And then Richard Dragon tricks a disabled man. <laughs> by, 
by throwing stones to mess with a his very hearing. very dangerous disabled man. He is very dangerous. I will say that. He's a blind uh, opponent, a, a member of this Cobra cult. And uh, yeah, he's able to mess around with his hearing, his super effective hearing by throwing some stones. And then he defeats him. Bird gets close to killing a child. But Batman frees the kid with his men defeated and his sacrifices free. Bird turns his sword on himself. Uh, and with Bird dead, the ritual works and the door opens and our heroes are ready to face whatever is inside. Mm-hmm. Bird's like a nothing character in this, right? Like he's just. <laughs> he doesn't do anything. He doesn't move the plot. I mean, I guess he got the gate. He, he gets the gate. He, he murders a, a prostitute. <laughs> Let's not forget that. Yeah, uh, 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 brutally murders a prostitute and watches gleefully, saying yeah. that this is his favorite part. But he is wrapped up in. I mean, he's shown to have no powers. Was the 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 rat eating just like really down on this Naga stuff? <laughs> he's just like a really big fan. He's like, I should. Just, I guess so. <laughs> I a monkey see, monkey do kind of stuff. Uh, but apparently, yeah. Um, but, but but yeah, I love the foreshadowing because they're like. We have to face what's ever inside for Osensei. Yeah, for Osensei. And then, boom, Osensei shows up. So, what's up? <laughs> he uh, shows Good up. Good rang. Yes. <laughs> he shows up. They haven't seen him since his sacrifice, and he just walks out. Richard Dragon goes up to, you know, confront his sensei, and mm-hmm. he's attacked. And coming out of Osensei's mouth, he reveals that he is actually the great Naga and has seized, seized control of Sensei's body. And his army is ready to come through the gate and lay waste to earth. Osensei then battles his students and takes them down easily and then begins to just mock Bruce by calling him the worst student, <laughs> saying that <laughs> it doesn't matter that your parents are dead. Like, just really being mean. Just complete dick. And they say, they say, show me who your friends are and I'll show you who you are. Right? Because, you know, you hang around people and you learn their kind of methods and so hanging out with shiva all day batman hears all this slander about how he's the worst student and he promptly uses his cape to snap osensei's neck again i'm like what is going on you see a man his head wrapped in this cape you see the tension as batman pulls it you hear the crack of the neck and then the body go limp batman just killed the man i was just like who is this character Yes, he just kills him, but it doesn't kill him. That's not the case. Oh, Sensei gets right back up and takes Batman down. Naga says that, you know, you can't kill him, but he does need a stronger vessel, a vessel strong enough to hold his spirit. Around this time, are you thinking this is Bruce? Uh, Bruce I'm imagining that's the, I'm imagining that is the inference. Yeah. Or Yeah. At least the intention, right? Get people off of the, the old sense. Mm hmm. Uh, yeah, it's just so weird. He just breaks that man's neck. I'm like, who is this Batman? Yes, he does not. He uh, he doesn't. You can't even you can't even claim that he knew he'd make he'd survive it because he's surprised after. I, he's surprised that he came back alive. Not even surprised that he killed him. Like he thought in that moment he would have been like, "No, that's what I meant." Like, I yeah, didn't, you, you can't I even didn't claim that he. To. You can't even claim that he knew this. Like this entity would survive it. Like he's shocked. I think that it would have been cool to have him be like, I, "There was no other way," but sure. it wasn't that. He was just like, "This is the first thing I thought of." Actually, strangling. <laughs> uh, Naga says, "Yeah, he needs a vessel strong enough, but it's not Batman." He declares, "It's Richard Dragon." Dragon is the true vessel in the prophecy. Of course. And, and he, he reaches his hand out and says, join me, brother. And he's, he's like, nah, bro, this is kind of trash. And I'm going to whoop your ass, basically. And he's like, yeah, okay. Let, let's see what you can do. And they go hand to hand. He literally goes hand to hand with a serpent god. Mm-hmm. Did you catch what was going on? Did their like auras come out of their bodies? What was that like animality <laughs> thing? <laughs> I didn't actually. I'm not trying to rewatch it now. Uh, did 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 you catch some of the um the old glow? Is that what that? Oh, that's from uh uh. Is it the last dragon? I, I, yes, I believe it is. 
That's awesome. He got, I, the, he got the glow. He got the glow. That's <laughs> that's so, that's super cool. Yeah, they're they're locked in. They're locked in battle. Batman uses his batarangs to stop Naga from possessing Dragon and kind of distract him for a second. And he tosses Soul Breaker to Richard Dragon, who plunges it into the body of his former mentor, freeing him from possession. Hmm. GT, did this sword impalement kill Osense? <laughs> Most likely. Or was he dead before? And it was just I don't know. I I, 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 I don't. I, I There's no rules for possession, is there? Hmm. Yeah, because I kept thinking. I thought like, okay. Well, now that he now that the spirit's gone from him, maybe he'll come back to life. Uh, but then when he seemingly succumbing to his wounds, I'm like, oh, he still has a hole in his chest. Yeah, he does. He still has a soul breaker shaped hole in his chest. So, yeah, that doesn't work at all. <laughs> um, go ahead, brother. No, yeah, that's just, just like I, I, I wouldn't know. Like he walks, he, he goes in alive. You don't see him get killed or anything. Yeah. But like um, he just comes out like possessed. So it. it like he could have been, he could have been st- still there. No, even then, like he mentions, um, Naka mentions that he can hear, um, his oh, sensei in the oh, back of yes. his head. Yes. Yep. Yep. Which is probably where he got the like. He probably was like, oh, sensei was probably like, don't don't fight Batman. He's the weakest of them all. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and that's why he's like, he's like, yeah, Bruce, you're trash. You're. A, I'm hearing him. He's telling me right now in the back of my head. He said you never watched the rice bowls. You were terrible. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. You're a uh, terrible cook. You're a terrible cook, which might be true. I don't think I've ever seen Bruce Wayne chef it up. I'll, uh, oh, mm. All those fucking um, sandwiches. Well, you know what they say. With prep time, anything's possible. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, jeez. Just use our code HelloFresh.com slash Batman. Get, <laughs> no, we are not, we're not sponsored by HelloFresh. But um, with no vessel, Naga returns through the gate. I like that he just like did like a like a, like a tour and then just went right back in. Yes. Um, he taught. Uh, oh, Sensei says some final words before succumbing to his wounds. Of course he does. And in order to close the gate forever, you know they're thinking, okay, well we're gonna have to figure this out. We're gonna need a sacrifice or something. Uh, but Batman says, "I got this." He enters Naga's dimension wielding Soul Breaker. No, but, I like that. I like that they're all arguing over who should do it, and Batman's already done it. <laughs> yes, because they know he'll he'll never be chosen. So he's like, I gotta go do this quick because everybody, it's already a, the worst kept secret that I'm terrible at all of this. So I gotta <laughs> go and do something because if not, why is my name in this film? <laughs> so he goes, and but Richard, Shiva, and Ben are like, Nah, bro, we're going with you. Just like the Suicide Squad, now they're a bunch of assholes mm. standing in a circle. It's, it's the moment. Bunch where, of assholes standing in a circle. It's a moment where the team comes together, and I think that um, I think it, it it was well here. Once the gate has closed, the four the four prepare for battle against Naga and his demon horde, and the movie seemingly ends. Um, yeah, it was weird. Very weird. It could seemingly like I set up for another movie, and I don't, don't think you would start another movie that way, right? Like well, um, so we're in the <laughs> we're in the limbo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You understand? Like uh, previously on, and then the, I would love <laughs> if the previously on was just all the murders, just like the, 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 <laughs> the fingers through the throat, the the cape strangulation, setting a man on fire. I think they've all murdered somebody in this. Richard Dragon beat up a blind man. There's a lot of things going on <laughs> in this series. It's an, uh, it's an oddly heroic move for Shiva, who's just an out and out terrible person throughout this entire film. Which is kind of coinciding with her depiction in all of comics, right? Like she's yes. never been up, she's never been like an anti hero. She's always been out and out bad. I like that. I like her inclusion in this, though. Um, I wonder if at any point they were considering putting Jaden in, in this, like as a member of the team. I actually thought she was going to be one of the ones they get rec- they recruit later on. It was very surprising that she died in that flashback. Yeah, that was interesting. I, I, I didn't think um I mean I guess like you guys you gotta establish who the bad people are by killing somebody, but I didn't expect that. Who would you say are Marvel's equivalents to this these kind of characters? We we would you would obviously have to say Iron Fist and Shang Chi, right? Those go up there. Is God, Electra is Electra one? 
Mm. Church. You know what? Like he led the hand. That's those, those, the, I gotta say those are a little weirder because it ends up being like it ends up being like Electra and Daredevil. Um, I don't know they they got they've got a lot of martial artsy characters, but they're not so tied up in a martial artsy like yeah um, culture box. Right. Yeah, I would say Shang Chi was stuck there for quite some time. Oh yeah, sure, 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 sure. But, yeah. and, and that's probably the reason they never did it again. Right, and I think that if it wasn't for Luke Cage, Iron Fist could have got stuck over there as well. Oh, for, for sure, for sure. I, I, I didn't. I, Iron Fist being the, one of the sillier looking ones. I mean, come on, what is that mask? Imagine if they decided somewhere later on they're like, no, you know what? We're just gonna do a series on uh, Bronze Tiger and Richard Dragon. We're just gonna put them together, <laughs> have them solve crimes. I don't if know. If it's Michael Jai White, I'm in. Uh, totally, totally. Then you <laughs> just like give this man like movie credibility i mean he's in dark knight right he is yes Uh, enough (laughs) with the clown (laughs) again like oh we brought in michael just to act interesting choice okay he he has to be far and away the most uh decorated i guess you would say comic book uh, actor in this film especially to only have uh oh in this film yes yes for for sure um (laughs) I gotta find out who does O Sensei. Who is the voice for that? Is o Sensei? James Hong? Who is James Hong? You you know him. When you see his face, you will absolutely know him. Ah, he's been in a lot of things. This yes, this Mr. Hong. Uh, but most notably, wow, I was gonna say most notably, but to go to his, um, go to his filmography is a whole. You know when page. It, you know when his filmography is another page. He's worked a lot. Oh yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. Uh, for those uh, who've been who watch uh, Kung Fu Panda, he's Mr. Ping. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's Dalin Wong in Jackie Chan Adventures. Yes. Voiced a bunch of people in Avatar The Last Airbender. Uh, was in Blade Runner. Was in Airplane. Was in Chinatown. Was in Wayne's World 2. Big Trouble in Little China. Balls of Fury. R.I.P.D. Go Tell the Spartans. I've never heard of that film. But yeah, he definitely has his uh, bona fides when it comes to this. Yes. I like the I like the authentic casting in this. I did. yes, I appreciate I, that. I enjoyed it. Um, we it's it's a big thing now. You know, everyone. Kelly Hugh about, always deserves a little more work. Yeah. Uh, although, it, although I will say, I think I I have to look that up. Actually, I think Kelly Hugh is somewhat somewhat very often oft used in these comic book um properties. I could definitely check that out. I love that the actress who plays Lady Eve is also credited as prostitute. Just, oh God! Just prostitute. It don't say like Richard Dragon's date or any of it. Just says prostitute. She's <laughs> just a prostitute. Oh my gosh! Kelly Hugh is Lady Deathstrike. How did I forget that? Yes, yes, that's right. She is Lady Deathstrike. Uh, she was. All, let me see what else she was in. But yeah, Lady Deathstrike is pretty damn big. Um. She is Miss Lee in Batman Under the Red Hood. I do not remember a Miss Lee in Batman Under the Red Hood. <laughs> uh, and yeah, Batman Sword of the Dragon. She is going to be in a direct-to-video DC Comics animated film called Catwoman Hunted. And in that, she will play Jane. Ah, uh, yes. We, Cheshire. Yes, we all saw this recently. Um, they're, they're, it's, a, it's an anime style. They keep threatening us with it. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, but I but I know I do hope it's pretty good. And then as you said, she was China White and Arrow. Um, I'm trying to see if she was Cheshire in the- Young Justice. Cheshire in Young Justice. She is in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Damn, yeah, she might be just up there with Michael she's in an Afro. Yeah, she's an Afro Samurai. So that's pretty cool. Uh <laughs> I completely spaced on her being X23, and I feel bad about it. I, I, I almost do too, but then I don't feel bad about that movie. That's true. She played Lady Shiva in Batman Arkham Origins. So that's her check check. The same way for... Nice. Right. Okay, okay. So that makes... Double tipping. Yeah. And she is officially the voice of Devora in the Mortal Kombat films. Mm. So there you go there. But yeah, I, I dug this. The only thing I think I think is a bit short, but you know what? If it would have been 10 minutes longer, I would have been complaining about the length. That's just how <laughs> things go. Um, I mean, at an hour and a half, it still feels a little longer than some of their movies. Yeah. I don't know why, like I said, Bruce Wayne is included in this other than the fact that 
He is known to be one of the best uh, martial artists. I wish he would have been somebody they had to go get, like a Spider Man almost. Sure. You know, in Civil War, but his name sells a lot of books. It's so. see, like, it's an interesting thing where like it's um, it's very much a Batman movie in marketing. Yeah, because like his name tops the rest of it, but like what? he is by no means the strongest guy and the, the strongest character on the team. What was your um? You were making a point about this in comparison to uh, Justice League Dark. Was it oh, that? The- yeah, it, it it was it it was the point that like it's it's one of those things that like really doesn't need Batman in the slightest because the the story has so little to do with him, right? And and, and he's not even the best at what he does on the team, right? You know, especially in Justice League Dark, where, where the, the entire point is made out to be that he doesn't know what's going on. He, he doesn't believe like it, right? The, the whole time, he's like, I don't know the hell, I don't believe any, any of this crap. It's like, why'd you come then? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't need you, bro. Uh, but yeah, more and more and more and more and more Batman forever. We have Batman on Titans right now. We have a, the Batman coming out soon. They're threatening us with a Batgirl movie of sorts. Black Canary supposed to be getting there. So DC is going to be rolling out stuff just as much as Marvel is, do you have high hopes for Shang-Chi, Mr. GT Rebirth? Um, hopes? Yes, I have high hopes for it. <laughs> um, it, it hopes. It's, it's a genre of movie I enjoy, and like I, um, for, even, for, even for the sake of representation, I'd love for it to be like, to be like a super popular like Chinese character. Um, and, 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 and even like how do you say politically speaking like it is so hard to get an Asian lead these days that like it'd be really good for this movie to succeed and yeah I don't want to be what is it called uh like distasteful but mm. also an, uh, a Chinese lead yeah you know yeah. And, and now in the current times with especially with our last uh commander in chief mm. things have been a bit iffy there yeah with, with that kind of stuff. Um, I hope this is, and I, this is going to sound terrible, but I hope this is like the Asian equivalent to a Black Panther. You know, mm-hmm. I hope that there are kids all over the world that see themselves as Shang-Chi and see that their abilities, you know, they can join the team. They don't have to, uh, you know, look for any other heroes because there's a hero that looks like them. I know how I felt when I saw Into the Spider-Verse, that Miles thing, mm-hmm. when they started playing reggaeton. And, right. And thing, I'm like, Oh, is somebody watching me who sees i feel seen like, somebody's watching me right here in this moment uh so i hope that that i've seen some of the clips too some of the action looks uh, tremendous um and if they could do this kind of action as they've done here in animated films then surely surely marvel will have the wherewithal to give us a good action uh packed martial arts film i'm just incredibly worried because of iron fist Mm. You know, but rumor behind that is that that actor Finn Jones wasn't given a lot of time to prepare for the fight scenes. If you want to use that, you know, if you want to believe that, <laughs> right? Uh, but yeah, we're giving you full confidence, Marvel. All right, uh, you better go knock it out of the park. We got what if still happening every week. We have Titans still happening every week. We have Star Girl still happening every week. But next week. That's we, a lot. Will, we will be tackling Superman and Lois, the television show that keeps making me cry for some reason, bro. Does it, bro? I, I've I've gotten. I was trying to get eyes. you to watch it for a while. And you were waiting for it to be done. It, it's completely done now. The series finale just dropped, but I can't look too much into it because I'll spoil myself. And we actually just started a reaction series. Now I am doing these reactions multiple a day. All right. The idea being. That by the time I am done reacting to all the episodes, it will be time for me to review the podcast or review it on the podcast uh, because I would hate to not be finished with the series (laughs) and then talk about the series uh, as somebody who's seeing it from afar. But the first episode, if you're listening to this, the first episode has already been released of this uh, reaction series. Uh, We're starting a new series, Comic Book Click Reacts, um, every Monday and Friday you'll get an episode drop of me watching Superman and Lois and reacting for the first time. So me reacting to the pilot is actually live on YouTube as we speak. And episode two's reaction will come out this Friday. So we'll have Monday reaction, Wednesday, major issues, Friday reaction. And for as little as $3 a month, 10 cents a day, 
you could help support us by becoming a patreon at patreon.com slash cbc clubhouse and if you do that you get access to the comic book click reacts video series earlier than anybody else so go ahead and consider supporting us and helping us out in that way how do you get there though how do you get to patreon.com slash cbc clubhouse the fastest way go to comicbookclick.com comicbookclick.com is the one stop for everything comic book click our merchandise our articles you can read about the members of the click and every single episode of the major issues podcast is on there that's over 190 episodes of content that's over <laughs> i don't know math 380 hours i said eventually what i want them to do is boil all this so they can make a robot that knows how to respond to all, <laughs> all the things I want to respond to. Like it goes into like a murderous spree. Once you hear John Kent, it just starts. No, no, John Kent, John Kent, Jonathan right. Kent. Um, so help us get there. <laughs> Go to comicbookclick.com, hit that support CBC um, button. And you can get to our Patreon, hit that shop CBC button to go to our Tee Public store where we have brand new merchandise, some of it inspired by the Suicide Squad, uh, and it's flying off the shelves. So you can do that there. Don't forget the Major Issues podcast is available wherever podcasts are found. That's Podbean, Stitcher, Podcast Attic, the Apple Podcast app, TuneFind, YouTube, Spotify, Ooh. and more. The quickest way to find us, though, go to Google, type in Major Issues Podcast, and watch us pop right up. We'll be the first six results, hopefully. Um, hopefully. But I, I'm very proud of our Google ranking that you can just type in Major Issues Podcast, and we pop right up. We worked hard for that consistently each and every week. So if you guys want to help us out free of charge, if you can't give us the $3 a month and you can't buy a T-shirt, how about you rate and review us on iTunes or rate and review us wherever you're listening to this podcast because it can help like-minded listeners find us. When they get recommended stuff, they only get recommended the best of the best. So put your pinkies up and give us five stars and help us get to the clientele that needs to listen to this podcast. Help us find our audience because we know that they're out there. I've been to the future where we become the newest, hottest, latest, and greatest thing to come to comic books and comic book media. But I can't tell you how we do it. So make sure you get on the bandwagon before the bandwagon gets full. Again, you can support us uh, financially by going to patreon.com slash CBC Clubhouse and get early access to videos. You can support us by buying merchandise, which we get a cut from at tpublic.com. Or you can rate and review us on iTunes, tell a friend to tell a friend about the podcast. Or Reach out to us at facebook.com slash comic book click, Instagram at comic book click, or use the hashtag comic book click to talk about the newest, hottest, latest, and greatest things to come to comic books and comic book media. Are you still accepting uh, people talking to you online, GT? Uh, they can if they want to. I don't. <laughs> tongue, tongue I'm, I'm, always on the, I'm always there. We were GT. If you want to talk to me, I, I don't do it much, but hey. There you go. Let them know how you shot. feel. Give him a shot, people. Come on, give him a shot. Talk and, about how terribly thick evil Lady Shiva is. Yes, yes. Go see this movie. If you if you uh if, I mean, if you're listening to this far, you probably have already seen it. But again, watch it again <laughs> with our commentary in mind and the things that we said, it just makes it so much better. But who, um, who do we have coming in for Superman and Lois? Superman and Lois, we have the aspiring Kryptonian. Hey! The aspiring Kryptonian will be coming in for Superman and Lois. Uh, hailed the comic book um, collector, the su- the second biggest Superman collector on this big blue planet. And uh, she has her own podcast, The Inspiring Kryptonians. I'm going to have her on the episode next week to plug that, talk all things Superman. And yeah, somebody got to talk me through these feelings because... <laughs> these, these feelings man i got a lot i got a lot so I many got, feelings i got a lot of them and the cool thing about it is you can watch me give my honest to god first run reactions on youtube for free you can choose to give me as little as three dollars a month and get them early join it this is a community join us uh because we're going to the future kids so next week superman and lois but uh that'll be it for this week my name is george serrano aka the don I'm Gregory Thomas, a.k.a. GT Rebirth. And this has been our Batman Soul of the Dragon recap and review. And remember, do not use your fingers to plunge into another man's throat. Do not (laughs) use your cape to strangle an old man and crack his neck until death. Do not use mace and a lighter to set another person on fire. You don't need to do any of those things. You know why? Because you are the clique. And remember that you, yes, you are worthy. <laughs> <laughs>